the anvil, then nobody had to bother to listen to that human voice. So then long up in the 18th century when Morse code was invented and the telegraph came about, then it became nicknamed the Blacksmith's Morse Code. And just as Morse Code was a combination of dits and dots, the blacksmith was tapped and dragged upon the end. Each one of them meaning a different thing, just like the code, and then each group of them put together meant a different thing, just like the code. And, and even though created thousands of years before, it did bear a great deal of resemblance. But then, for wherever it was carried out here, that was where the work was intended, because this became the hammer gauge to everything that was laid upon it. Because this was the back of the metal, quarter way up, half, three quarters, and the end. The end was finally 1908, 1910. That was when the entire world woke up that day and realized that the anvil was no longer just the tool, and the anvil was set into the percussion musical instrument category. And then you had the anvil choruses, which were made up of up to 50 anvils, all keyed differently. Most of your major orchestras, your bands, your symphonies all had an anvil. And the play one sounds a lot like wind chimes, bells, hammer dulcimer, xylophone. Me and my three cousins, we still use this 50 part language just like we was taught 38 years ago. So when we're working together, it sounds a lot like what you're about to listen to. My left hand represents the master's hammer. My right hand represents his striker's hand. Yeah, I told you it wouldn't be bomb bomb. <laughs>